Hi students, we're going to talk about section 2.5 today um, in our notes video here. So first thing I threw out here were just some um, pictures because we're going to be talking 3D figures. So just some pictures of some 3D figures. So think about what you would call these. Um, this one right here looks like a tent. Um, a lot of people want to call this a pyramid. It is not because it doesn't come to a single point. This is actually a triangular prism. Um, in this case, the base has to be the triangle that's here because for it to be a prism, all of the sides have to be rectangles versus a pyramid, all the sides have to be triangles. And there's no way to make this a, um, a pyramid. So uh, triangular prism is what you would call that one. Okay. Usually we would do pretty well with these. This is a cylinder. This is a cone. This is a sphere. And then usually number five does pretty well. Um, this one right here would be a, uh, probably I would say a square pyramid. You don't technically um, have enough here, but it does look like it's made to be a square. You could call it just a rectangular pyramid if you wanted to. Um, we do make some assumptions about some right angles and stuff when we get into three dimensions. So that's the names of those. We're gonna go over those um, more here, but that's kind of the idea of this section. So a polyhedron is a closed three-dimensional figure. So we talked about polygon, the word polygon, and that was a two-dimensional figure. Polyhedron is the word for a three-dimensional figure, but it's a closed three-dimensional figure made up of flat polygonal regions. So a um, sphere, is not a polyhedron because it's not a flat um, region, okay? A sphere, a cone, and a cylinder are the ones that are not polyhedrons, but polyhedrons are, are defined here, um, essentially the three-dimensional polygons. Um, we have faces of polyhedrons, okay? Flat surface on the polyhedron. We have edges of them. So those are going to be the, um, uh, yeah, the edges. I don't know how else to explain that. I guess if I draw myself a picture here, that would be easier. So if we have this rectangular prism here, then the face is going to be um, this piece here, and there would be six of them in total. Um, the edge for this one, let's do a different color. The edge would be like this piece here. And then the vertex um, for this one would be like one of the corners. So that would be the vertex of it. So we have those different pieces. Um, the bases of a prism or a cylinder are two parallel congruent faces of the polygon. So for this one, there's actually lots of answers that could be the bases. I'm actually going to flip back here real quick. So for this one, the bases are those two triangles. Again, the bases of a prism have to be two congruent, and there would be another one over here, two congruent faces like that, and that's what you would get there. So that's the base, okay? And then the base of a pyramid or a cone is the face opposite the vertex, okay, of that solid. So the one face that's there. So that's your three-dimensional figures um, and the general idea um, behind them. Okay, so types of solids. You have a prism, so a polyhedron that has two parallel congruent bases, okay? So your prisms here are going to be one of them, and you're going to have two bases, versus your pyramids that you have are going to have one base in that case, okay? Other things you know, um, two parallel congruent bases connected by parallelograms that are the faces. So these sides that are in here are going to be parallelograms. Um, most of ours are going to be rectangles. We're going to refer to them um, as rectangles most of the time, but um, you can have a uh, figures that are like the Leaning Tower of Pisa kind of thing to where you get parallelograms. So the sides are going to be parallelograms in this one. And then in a pyramid, the sides are going to be triangles. Okay, so the sides are going to be triangles in that um, pyramid there. So that gives you some information there on how to kind of um, go between the two. I guess the other thing that I would say here is that a pyramid, it comes to a point, you should be able to find that um, where all of the sides come to a point um, versus here, you don't have that point um, that happens. Okay, if we go to the other ones, again, these are the ones that people um, usually do the best with. Cylinder does have two bases to it. Um, it has no other faces to it. Um, your cone has one base and your sphere has no bases, okay? No faces, no edges, no vertices um, to um, go with those. So polyhedra, or I don't know why it's doing that, or polyhedrons are named by the shape of their bases. So this is the example we started off with, a triangular prism. So you can't call this a rectangular pyramid because they don't come to a point up here. So your base in that case has to be this side piece here, and you've got two of them. And then all of the sides then are rectangles, and so that's a prism. 
rectangular prism. This one's actually interesting because any one of those faces could technically be the base and still make a prism out of it. Pentagonal prism because you have a pentagon as the base there. Triangular pyramids. So there's an example of that one versus rectangular pyramid versus pentagonal pyramid. So you've got um, some different names there. Making sure that you know your different polygons in this case is important. So you have your triangle, which is three-sided. You have your quadrilateral, um, which is four-sided. You have your pentagon which is five-sided. You have your hexagon, which is six-sided. Heptagon is seven. Octagon is eight. Nonagon, I like that one, is nine. And decagon is 10. Um, I guess the only other one you might see is dodecagon. If you put those together, do is two and decagon is 10, so that's 12. Okay, so those things are ones that you would want to know. Um, for this. Okay, so here's what I was talking about with Leaning Tower of Pisa. We have right versus oblique. Okay, In right prisms, the bases are connected to each other by rectangular faces. So most of what we're going to do is rectangular faces. However, we have oblique prisms where at least one face is not a rectangle. That's where you get those parallelograms in that case. So this is kind of think of that Leaning Tower of Pisa idea. Now we assume, the assumption we are going to make we assume that everything is a right prism unless it says otherwise. Okay, so that is where we can make some assumptions of some right angles that are happening. Okay, um, a regular polyhedron is if all of the faces are regular polygons and all of the edges are congruent. So if you think about it, there's um, some here, there's five of them. They're called platonic solids because Plato used them extensively. Um, so they're named after him, but regular polyhedron. So what I want you to think of here is if we give you a tetrahedron here, and I don't need you to know the name tetrahedron, actually any of these names up here, if you do, that's just kind of an extra little piece to it. But if you have a um, regular triangular pyramid, that's what this is, regular triangular pyramid, that means that there's four equilateral triangles as faces. Okay. Versus here, if you have a cube, a cube, and that would be a name I would know, but a cube is six squares that are the faces. Okay. And then you can keep going. So an octahedron here, um, we have eight equilateral triangular faces. And notice this is not actually a prism or a pyramid. This is actually the best you can do is it's two pyramids on top of each other there. Um, then you have a dodecahedron, which just dodeca tells you 12. So there's 12 faces to it. But this one actually is regular pentagons. And then your last one, an icosahedron. Icosa actually is the prefix for 20. Um, and you have equilateral triangular faces there. Again, I'm not worried about you knowing those uh, words across the top, but do know that when you're given equilateral um, faces, that that's kind of some important stuff there. Okay, so identify properties of three-dimensional figures. So if you look at this figure right here, um, the determine whether each solid is a polyhedron, okay? So the solid formed by polygonal faces is a polyhedron, so it is a polyhedron. Um, and uh, there is no base, but the solid has blank equilateral triangular faces. So how many faces does this have? Now this RSTU in here is not a face because it's not shown. It's got to be on the outside. So there are four triangles up here and there's four triangles down here. So there's eight faces to it. Okay. Um, and therefore they're going for the name of it. Um, I'm not worried about that. So I'm not actually even going to fill it in. Okay. So if we we're going to answer these bases would be none. Faces for that polygon would be eight edges. So you count all of the edges that are showing. So we have one, two, three, four across the bottom. We have one, two, three, four across the top and we have one, two, three, four in the middle. And so that makes 12 edges. And then vertices, we have one, two, three, four in the middle and one at the bottom, one at the top. And so we end up with six um, vertices in that case. Okay, with a um, cylinder, the solid has a curved surface, so it is not a polyhedron. It has two congruent and parallel bases. So if you were asked how many bases this is, you do say two, okay? And it is a cylinder is the name for this one. Okay, so you do have two bases, um, no edges and no vertices there, just to answer those questions. Okay, modeling. We are going to model some stuff. So the only thing I want to talk about here is that if we say like we want to have a model of this figure right here, a cylinder is going to be good for this one. Okay, probably not going to use a prism because it is rounded. And yes, it's not perfect. It doesn't kind of come up into the same um, shape at the top there, but it's pretty darn close and we're doing approximations when we're modeling. So a cylinder would be that one. This one right here, we have to look at the fact that we have a triangle um, rectangles back there. It's kind of that tent design, which remember is the hard one. So this is a triangular prism 
is what that would be. Plus the bottom of it here is going to be sitting on a rectangular prism. So we have a triangular prism and a rectangular prism um, kind of put together there. Now, technically you can do those together. If you look at this as all one face here, then I would name it based on this. And that's one, two, three, four, five sides. So you can just call this whole thing a pentagonal prism. So just wanted to go through some names there um, and what you can call them. Um, and it is a polyhedron. Okay. Okay. This is where it gets um, really into the mathematics. So often a geometric figure is used to model a real world object to estimate measure. Surface area is the sum of all of the areas of all the faces. So remember, faces are only ones that are being shown. Okay, not anything that's in the middle. Surface area would be all of the surfaces, the area of all of the surfaces, okay, um, of a three-dimensional figure. Volume is the measure of the amount of space that's enclosed by a three-dimensional figure. So volume is what's inside, surface area is what's on top, okay? Area versus volume um, is what we have here. Now, the formulas are all given to you here. I will tell you right now, you are not going to get these formulas in my class, okay? I'm going to go over them right now as to where they come from and what I expect um, from you guys to know for these. So for the purpose of uh, surface area for a prism and rectangular prism or whatever it happens to be, um, you can go through and, and memorize this. But what I look at for surface area of a prism is I say, okay, there's two bases. So I'm going to find two times the area of the base. Now I'm going to use this capital B because they have it defined right there. Okay. So two times the area of the base, Plus then the reason that they do perimeter times height is because you have all of these rectangular faces out here. And if you imagine taking all of these rectangles and laying them out flat so that this one right here is flat next to it. And this one over here is flat next to it. And then the one behind can fold out over here as well. Okay. Then you have one big rectangle with this base length being the perimeter of the base. Notice the capital P is the perimeter of the base. So that's where they use that from. Although all you can do is add together all of the areas of the rectangles. So you can add all of those together. But yes, perimeter um, times the height is the other piece to that. Okay. Then you get into surface. I'm going to go through all the surface areas. Surface area of this one right here. So we get a bunch of triangles on the side and a base at the bottom. So I always look at the surface area in this one as we have one base at the bottom. Plus I have to find all of these triangles. So if all of the triangles are the same, what I always do is then I just say four times the area of the triangle. So one half times that base length, I always call it B times the height of the triangle that's there, um, which is actually what is called the slant height. So you're going to see this cursive L, which is the slant height. So the height of the triangle is not actually the height of the um, pyramid because the height of the pyramid would go down to the middle of that right there. Um, the height of the triangle is along the edge. Um, and so I'm using that H and I guess I should be really careful with using that H because they do define the H, the height of the solid over there. Um, but that H, this is the area of the triangle is what I'm um, finding here. Um, the reason that they use one half times P times L, well, L we just talked about is this H that's here. Okay. And if you think about your P, so one half times P, well, four and B put together four times the base, four of these bases here is that perimeter of the base. Okay. So that's where that one comes from. Um, once you know those, the cylinder and the um, cone kind of come from those. So this one right here, if you look at two pi r, that's the circumference of the base. So that's your p times the height plus that pi r squared is the area of the base because it's a um, circle times two. So I actually say just memorize one formula right here and use this formula for both a prism and a cylinder. Okay. Same thing for a pyramid is in a pyramid. Um, you have one half times the perimeter times the slant height plus the base. Well, here your base is your circle. So there's your base. Okay. And one half times the perimeter times the slant height. The reason it looks a little different here is because it would be one half times the perimeter would be the circumference here. So two pi R and then times the slant height would be the L. Well, the one half and the two cancel out. So that's why it's pi R L. So I always say, just memorize again, one formula over here can be used for both a pyramid and a cone. And then the last one you got to memorize is your sphere that's there and you just have to memorize it. It's four pi r squared. We could get into more of why it's that, but that's um, what it is. So knowing that one. 
Okay, if we talk volumes, this is where I spend most of my time, volumes here is that volume is the amount of space it takes up. So if we think about finding the area of the base of this prism, then we would find the area of this rectangle. And the reason we multiply that area of the base by the height is because if you put rectangles, those same rectangles on top of each other all throughout the height, that ends up filling, hopefully you're starting to see this, but that ends up filling up the space that this figure takes up. And so you get the volume. If you can kind of see what I drew through there, you imagine like sheets of paper stacked on top of each other. If you multiply by the number of sheets, then you end up with that volume kind of idea there. So base times height is another one um, to memorize. That one works just the same with cylinder. So the only reason this one is different is because the base of a cylinder is always pi r squared, but it is just base times height. So again, I don't memorize that one. I just have my prism done and I know it's a cylinder. Okay. If we look at our um, right pyramid idea here, um, and you're going to get into, you're actually going to watch a video later on that's going to help you with this one third idea. But essentially what it is, is that a right pyramid. So if I were to draw the prism that has this same base and this same height, let's see if I can give you guys a quick sketch of this here. Not great, but there it is. Okay, so if I think about that um, prism that would be around this right pyramid, we know that the, pr the pyramid is one third of the prism. So if you notice, the prism's formula is base times height. And so all you do here for volume is you do one third of that formula. And again, that is the exact same thing for your cone over here. It's one third times the base times the height. And so I don't memorize that one. The last one that you then need to um, know is the one for your sphere. Um, we'll go over something that will help you a little bit with that, but um, kind of committing this to memory will help. Okay, So you not only have to know the different um, symbols that are down here, but you got to know those six um, formulas that you need to memorize. Okay, so example three says find the surface area and volume of the cone around each other the nearest tenth if necessary. And it gives you the height of the cone and it gives you the radius of the base. Um, so surface area, because the radius of the base is 15 inches, but um, surface area of a cone formula is going to be the base, so pi r squared, times, and then it's pi r l, um, or sorry, plus pi r l is what our formula is. So I need to know the um, slant height, and in this I'm given the height and the radius, and so the slant height is that piece there. You are going to have a right angle here, and so you're going to solve Pythagorean theorem. So that's what you see here, a squ 8 squared plus 15 squared equal to c squared, 289 squared to 289 is 17. So this l comes out to be 17, you know your radius to be 15, that's given in the picture, times the pi plus the pi times 15 squared. So at this point, it's just a calculator problem. Put that in your calculator and you are going to get the answer that is about 1,508. Um, and then you've got your answer there. For volume purposes for this one, um, you use the volume formula, which again is one third the area of the cylinder that would be here. So the volume formula would be pi r squared, the area of the base of the cylinder, um, sorry, times the height times one third. So we've got all of this piece here. So one third times pi times that radius was 15 and the height was eight. And you type that into your calculator to get your answer there. Again, that comes out to 1,885 approximately. Um, the problem at the bottom of the page that's not done for you, again, if you wanna pause the video and then do it and then come back to this, you can. But surface area of a um, square prism here, but surface area, really is just all of those rectangles put together. So if you forget, you can always do this. You can do, okay, there is this rectangle in the front that is six by 10. And then there are two of those because there's the one in the back as well, okay? Then you can do the plus two um, six by 5.2 rectangles here and here. So six times 5.2 plus you can do the last one. Let's see if I can get another color here plus two times, and then you have the bottom, so the 10 by 5.2, and you have the top that's 10 by 5.2. And you can add all of that together. So that's how else you can do surface area. You can do it with your formula. Um, the formula for this one would be the area of the base, so it would be the 10 times the 5.2, it's the area of the base, um, times two, two bases, plus the perimeter of the base. So in this case, that would be 10 plus 10, plus 5.2 plus 5.2. So it'd be 30.4 times the height, which is six. And that 30.4 times six really just takes care of um, this piece here. And let's we'll see if I get the right one. And this piece here, 
um, when you're multiplying those out, that's what that would come out to. So that gives you your surface area. And again, either one of those formulas, you can just type in your calculator. For volume of this, it's area of the base. So again, we already did that. 10 times 5.2 is the area of the base um, times the height. So that's just times 6. And again, your calculator will do that one for you. So you can solve those two. Um, how, how, would you, how could you write the surface area of the cone in terms of pi? So being able to understand in terms of pi writing the surface area of a cone. So if I come back up here, um, 15 squared is um, 225. So you would write 225 pi plus you have 15 times 17, which is 255. I'm doing that on my calculator here. And that's a pi. So I'm treating pi almost like it's a variable here. And I can add those two together since they're the same variable. So 255 plus 225, probably don't need my calculator for that, but um, is 480. So you could write that surface area in terms of 480 pi, which should be approximately 1508. So that's giving you that idea. And then watch out for height versus slant height. So we just, in this one up here, we talked about that, that this is the height and then that is the slant height there. Um, and just make sure that you pay attention to if you're given height or slant height and what you need to use. Um, so in that case, you needed to use the slant height um, instead of the height. Um, and then square versus cube units. So remember that um, linear measurements are gonna just be in units, um, areas, whether surface area, whatever, are going to be in units squared, so square units. And then volumes now that we're dealing with now are going to be in units cubed. So just pay attention to your units as to what you are using for those. Um, another one is a pool one here. So volume of the pool to the nearest tenth. So you can do this a lot of different ways, but they're showing you the cross section of the pool. So essentially, if I can find the area of this piece here, and then I'll use the height um, per se. So we'll loosely define that height idea. We'll use the height as the 15 feet that it goes back. Um, then I can find the volume of that pool. So it would be the area of the base. The base would be this irregular shape times the height would be that kind of the length of the pool there. Um, so if I can find the area of this irregular shape here, it makes it easier. So I'm just going to break it down. And I have this long piece up here. That's 5 by 23, so I can do 23 times 5, which is 115. And then I have this rectangle here that is, since that was 5, 12 minus 5, this is 7. So it's going to be 10 times 7, or 70. And then I have this triangle, so 1 half times the base of that triangle. So i got to do a little math here. 23 minus 10 minus 6 is going to be 7 as a length there, and it was already 7 tall. So 1 half times 7 times 7. So 49 divided by 2, I'm going to get myself a decimal, 24.5. And if I add those together, 115 plus 70 plus 24.5, I get 209.5. So 209.5 is going to be my capital B, my area of my base. And for a prism, which is what this is because all of those sides are rectangles, 209.5, I can take that times the height, which is 15. And that gives me 3,142.5 um, feet cubed. I'm checking my units real quick, but yeah, those are all the same. So that would give me my volume there. Um, and then it says that his family needs to install a protective liner to cover the walls and bottom of the deep end of the pool. How much liner is required to cover the deep end of the pool in square feet? Um, so the walls and deep end, so they would essentially be taking away um, this piece here. You don't have to cover that, but you got to cover all of the rest of that. Um, and not the top. So it's a bit of a surface area thing, but it's a little bit, we got to kind of think here. So we have um, this front piece here. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and erase real quick. Um, so we have to cover the walls and that of the deep end of the pool. So we're going to do down here. So this is going to be a 10 by 15 rectangle. So that's going to be 150 um, feet squared that we've got to cover. And then we're going to have to cover this wall over here, which is going to be 12 by 15, which is going to give me 180, 180 um, that we've got to add to that. And then we've got to cover this front wall down here, which is 10 by 12, which is 120. And you have that same thing on that back wall over there, which is another 120. So we have type into my calculator here, we have 570 feet squared of um, wall to cover there. 
Okay, last thing is when modeling, you assume that a three-dimensional object is perfectly modeled by a geometric solid because this is not always true. You should assume that calculations are approximation. So just understanding that we're going to do a lot of approximating in here, and that's okay. Um, and, and just understanding that idea there. Okay, that's all I have for today.